they ain't know what you got them. They ain't know what to do them. Hi guys, so I'm back with Diamond Dave. Hi Diamond Dave. How you doing, Dana? I appreciate you having me on. Yes, I love our little what do we call this? Like I don't know, like, like little a, segment. It's like a segment, yeah. It's like yes. a segment. All right, so today is two things we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about Megan, the movie, okay. and the whole concept of these AI dolls. But Megan is an AI doll for kids, okay. um, children, you know. Um, it could be teenagers, preschool, but for kids. And I saw the movie. I enjoyed it. It it was it was it was scary, but not that type of scary. Um, but Megan is trending, right? They have the Megan dance. <laughs> um, this is part of the movie. Um I was trying to get to the Megan dance. So it's a dance that she does in the movie that is like trending all over social media and people are actually doing the dance in real life. Um, but this is the Megan doll, what, what the Megan doll looks like. Yeah, there you go. The Megan the dance. dance. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I actually bookmarked something here. Let me just go to bookmarks. Yeah, this is the Megan dance. Right. I'm not going to play it. You know, for copyright purposes. Yeah, understand. Yeah. So, and this was a scene in the movies. <laughs> so it's like AI doll gone wrong. But it, it was a funny movie. It was a little bit of, you know, horror or whatever. However, let's just pull it back. Okay. Because we see today AI dolls in real life. Not as um, functional as a Megan but just the whole concept. So I wanted to get your thoughts on the whole concept of these artificial inseminated human, humanoids, or whatever we want to call them. I mean, I think it's a good idea and I think they can serve a purpose. The mm -hmm. question we want to ask them is that how far do we go with it? Because mm -hmm. what you're probably going to get is the desire to make them more and more lifelike uh, because we see this with um, pets. So mm -hmm. people have now taken the pet and give it human personality and have given it a human role where they say well the pet is the mother or the father or that's your brother or your sister or I'm the mother or the father of the pet and that's because people have been with pets for so long they've kind of adopted them into their normal family and we may see the same thing with artificial intelligence to where you get this particular robot that's really supposed to be a tool but now you start trying to give it this human characteristic and this human personality and you desire that more and more and the question is how far do we go with that Right, how yeah. far? So, just going back to the movie, you haven't seen it. I sent you the preview, but I've seen the movie. Okay. And this Megan doll, what makes her so unique is it's beyond the average AI what we see today. Because when you know the parents purchase the doll for their kid, you pair your kid with this doll by the palm of their hand. So, okay. whatever you know, they could. It's like they're computing the temperature, you know, reading, you know, the heart rate and everything. And once you pair that AI with your kid, then they are locked together. Okay. So this AI doll, Megan is, you know, making sure that, you know, she's eating her vegetables, um, washing her hands when she finished with the bathroom, you know, reading her bedtime story, um, playing with her outside helping her with her homework you know she can compute all types of mathematics and intellect right so basically what you start to see in this movie the ai doll megan replacing parental duties now the parent could be paired with the doll as well for parental control it's just that for the movie's sake megan turns into chucky right <laughs> um but bring it back to real life why is that a problem? You know, you still need that human connection with you and your child. Mm -hmm. um, can the AI, the robot, start not obeying its owner? You know what I'm saying? Or like Megan, you are computed to do something, you know, to, to have the concept of right or wrong, but your concept is just completely turned into rage and you become violent. Mm -hmm. 
So how do you control a robot if you're giving a robot everything a human being has? It's just that they don't really have a soul or a conscience. You see what I'm saying? I understand exactly what you're saying. And that's something that's discussed in a lot of these type of productions because the question is, let's say we we roll out a car and it's, we, you know, we say the, the car has a, uh, what you call it, a recall. Mm -hmm. You got to bring the car back because we realize there's something faulty. When you have this artificial intelligence around you, well, let's say we create a certain model. Well, we say, well, that model was faulty, but what's going to be the repercussion with human beings if they have that particular model around them? So let's say we find a model that um, after so many years, it starts to not obey orders. And right. then after, and so then it, it turns on you because after, but we find that out over time. And if you look at a lot of movies, I don't know if you're a fan of uh, the Alien series. What we find out is that the actual Aliens was created by an Android model that was just a bad model. Aliens with Sigourney, or with Sigourney Weaver. Weaver. But once okay. we get deeper into the series, that actual alien monster was created by an android. That was a bad model, but it didn't matter. Once they made the model, it wasn't nothing they could do about it. Right. What? So what? We, which alien movie was that? Maybe I missed. We well, got that? the whole series, but if you go to the 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 last one that was made. Oh, when when Sigourney or Weaver we, Weaver was reborn into. No, not, not the clone. Stuff. We passed that. We like oh. six, seven episodes in. And oh. what we find out is that those aliens that she was fighting in the first and the second one was really created by an android named David. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, from Alien 1. That no, no, from uh, Prometheus. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. So that, that yeah. android, he really created the actual alien. That So really, Alien and Aliens is really after Prometheus. So he really, right. he, he really uh, uh, genetically engineered the alien and he made it hate humans because he hated humans. Okay. So I, you, you and I remember to, the movie Prometheus. Man, yes. With, or Idris Elba. So yes. you start to see this this narrative in a lot of these movies that we're going to give these al these androids so much human characteristics. Mm -hmm. But if it's a problem, they have already damaged humans because of the problem. And I think that's something I'm a big fan, also a big fan of Battlestar Galactica when you got the same thing. Mm -hmm. Cylons, artificial intelligence, we create them and they turn around and turn on humans because right. they get so human, they start to say, well, you know what? What do I need humans for? Exactly. Yeah. We could do it. We could do it ourselves. Ourselves. Um, and I'm not going to play this, but it says human like robot wakes up as UK company unveils Android Amica. Um, <clears throat> where's another one? You can see this, right? I can see it. Yeah. Um, Fact check. China's first plastic female that can do home chores and talk like humans. See? Yeah, and I think it was a clip in here where she was sitting next to Will Smith or something like that. Because I think I've seen this commercial. But um, And then we have this person who is in love with the idea of Mars um, and aliens. Um, Elon Musk, um, he tweeted, there will probably be far more robots, robots than humans in the future. Well, how do you know that? Yeah, I feel you. You know, and I think that's what he wants. He wants more robots than humans in the future. And that is what I'm afraid of. Um, robots versus well machine versus humans you know and eventually they annihilate us right yeah so i just think that is a big problem and that's the direction where we're headed yeah i think potentially i think between uh robots transhumanism clones i think they're probably going to do a merge between the all three mm -hmm. uh, because there's this desire especially from certain ethnic groups mm -hmm. to want to feel like they can create new life Right. And so there's really no extent that I think they won't go to to try to accomplish that because then if they can do that, then right, they can probably get rid of a lot of humans. And and it's like, well, and then it's like, why do you want to get rid of humans? So it's just more like the animal kingdom or the circle of life, you know, the animal kingdom. You talk about the food chain, you know. So we're kind of at the top, exactly. and then you have some, you know, at the bottom. But then you will be going to end up having these machines slash robots at the top of humans, you know, wiping out everyone. Um, I wanted to share this as well because this Elon Musk. So this is Walt Disney prepared to enter the grid. It's almost your turn. Ready. Tron life cycle run opens at Magic Kingdom Park March 4th, 2023. Okay. So, I, you know, again, they're 
walking into this Tron life cycle. What the hell is this, basically? Um, I don't know. <laughs> that looked like it's, it looked low key interesting, but that Tron world is like a simulated computer world where it's almost like a, uh, almost like a metaverse. Right. That's that's yeah. what I kind of, I kind of, yeah, almost like a metaverse. Was. You know, that's how they kind of, how they remade the old movie. So it's just, the question is what what rules are we going to have as to how far we can take the artificial intelligence because right. you're going to get a push for people to want to try to push it as far as possible mm -hmm. and then the question is what are going to be the implications of that because what i believe is eventually we're going to get to a point to where the artificial intelligence are going to start to say we actually are sentient where mm -hmm. they actually want to try to claim that they have a consciousness just like regular humans Right. And, if, and, and there's going to be an issue. to give them a conscience. But that's what I'm saying. So that's the issue. So if we do we keep them just dumb machines like a car, which is just a dumb machine, or do we try to make it so intelligent to where they start saying, well, because I can perceive my own self and I'm, I actually should have the same rights as a human. Right. That's what I'm saying. And when we talk, even when we talk about race, race is a social construct. People write books about it, whether, you know, those books was biased or actual, you know, with facts. But AI, they can read and comprehend that. So if they're reading it and they're intaking it into their conscious, whatever that conscious may be, then they're going to start acting and thinking the like same way. they're superior. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so that's that's that. And I, and I think once we uh, we're close to this, to where we are going to have robots that can program other robots, mm -hmm. it can cause an issue because then they now what do they need us for? Right. See, right now we got to do all the programming. Once they can program each other, they can code each other. What do they need us for? Right. And so that's what I think is that we have to really try to figure out what, how far they're going to take this. And I don't think they're going to stop taking it because I already, we already know that they can clone people now. Right. So where do they, where do they go now with the robot? So they want a robot that acts just like a regular person. Are exactly. they willing to try to keep it? And I think they're going to want robots in our society where you won't be able to tell the difference between a robot and a regular person. And then they have these sex dolls yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that men, they're buying. That's very popular. Yeah, it's a big, you know? it's a big market. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and they're going to want that to be more and more lifelike. Exactly. Exactly. And so with this Hollywood movie, Megan, listen, it is entertainment, but sometimes with Hollywood, they do show you what is actually happening now and what the future is going to look like. Exactly. So, all right. So, okay. Moving on. Um, and I said, I wanted to, you know, briefly talk to you about yeah, this bad customer service. You know, I don't want to make this a black thing, but I got to implement black people because, <laughs> but just bad customer service. I'm starting to experience this more and more, especially where my father lives at, right? He lives somewhat the beginning of the Midwest in Ohio. Okay. Um, and it's a difference of people behavior out here as opposed to the tri-state area now listen tri-state area new york new jersey connecticut yes you have assholes or whatever we are jaded and that's fine but when it comes to money because you need to have money to live over there we're going to be nice to you we don't care what you look like as long as you got green to spend we're going to do whatever we need to do to get your money what i found in a different location. And I think we all need to just travel to other locations of this country, right? And stay for a minute. But the black people out here have poor customer service skills. Um, I'm talking about whether you're a professional, whether you work at fast food, it does not matter. Whether you work at what, it does not matter. The black people out here have horrible customer service skills. Whereas to their white counterparts, who are on the same income bracket with them, their attitude is so much better, right? But just bad, overall bad customer service skills. Why are we seeing that more and more? I don't know if you experienced that now, but I'm starting to experience more bad customer service. You mean the B.O.B.s across the board? What's B.O.B.? Black-owned businesses. Oh, number one, black-owned businesses. Okay. And across the board for example medical office when you, when i go for I, i'm starting to notice too when i go for my appointments their front desk you have the yeah, nurses yeah. And you have the receptions yes they're busy but i notice even with their attitudes they have they'd be a little snippy you know they're not happy 
I know you're busy. I know it's medicine. I know HIPAA, but they just look like they have an attitude. So across the board and zoning in on black people as well. Okay. So I think one of the biggest challenges, let's say across the board is the fact that, um, and a lot of these jobs, they don't really pay a lot. Mm -hmm. So they're not bringing people in and they're not really investing in training these people. And also not investing in hiring the right people because they know they don't want to pay. So they don't really hire people that are really qualified and have the right aptitude. And then when they bring them in, because they turn the people over so fast, I don't think they're really training people properly. And I deal with a lot of this when I have to deal with customer service, not only in the United States, but also overseas. Mm -hmm. You deal with people that really don't know their job because they haven't really been trained to know their job because they're really not paying them. Right. When it comes to BOBs, I'm kind of, I'm in the middle because I run a BOB. I deal with customers. I think in some scenarios, sometimes people uh, can be overwhelmed and ne not necessarily know how they should apply customer service. And then I think sometimes the expectation is higher sometimes for a BOB than it is for another type of business. So I sometimes got to come in with an understanding of this person may be a little bit overwhelmed because of the scale of their business. And they maybe can't provide the customer service that maybe they will want to because they just may be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But it's sometimes I feel like when we're dealing with BOBs, we sometimes can have a higher expectation of customer service than we can have. And maybe we go to the number one retailer in the country and we get no customer service from them, but we're so used to it. We don't care. So I kind of weigh those out. But when I'm dealing with just a regular business, I often know, like we talk about medical offices, they often don't pay and they don't train. Okay. So I just think that's the issue in the medical space. When you're dealing with a lot of times with private practices, they often don't pay a lot. So, and they don't train. So the city that I'm from, if you are a young a Latina woman, you could get a job in a medical office in the city that I'm from. But my question is, were you trained to be a receptionist or a clerical worker? Or did they just give you the job just because mm -hmm. you was a young person and you weren't going to ask for a lot of money? Mm -hmm. And so that's the issue. You haven't been trained to actually do the job well because we just want to hire somebody that's young and cheap. Then when I deal with you, because like I, one time I went to a, a, a walk-in clinic, it was on Sunday, and you could tell the people really didn't want to be there. And it was just some real younger Latina chicks. You just tell mm -hmm. they really was a Sunday. I probably had got done partying the night before. They didn't right. really want to be there. But they're not really being paid a lot of money. So because we're not really putting a lot of money into the job, we can't get top people. Well, speaking of pay, that that is one of the reasons. And that's, and, and, and that's really, that shouldn't even be the excuse why you give people bad service or bad yes. customer services. But I understand that. But I've come across professionals. You know, I hired a graphic designer. And it's just like, no, I didn't need it right away, mm -hmm. but I shouldn't have to wait almost two weeks for the final draft or just a draft or one, a second draft or a final draft. Right. But it was just, it, it was to me, it was just unorganized. It's to me, if I tell you change this, take this out, put this in, you're doing one and you're not doing the other as if you're, you yeah. can't comprehend or you're not listening. Yeah. You're not listening because yeah. you're, you have a whole bunch of other orders, right? That you have to pay attention to. And I don't know where you have mine in queue. So it just, it looks like you're unorganized on how you pushing out your orders. You're not following directions. I put it in an email and I'm verbally telling you, I'm going to sit up here and yes, I'm going to write a public review on Google reviews <laughs> and it's not going to be good because I understand. But you don't me, take let, the time out to write reviews, black people, white people yeah. do, yeah, you yeah. and you, but companies, it does help that company because if they read, okay, they're dissatisfied about that, you know, or whether it's true or not, but it kind of helps you to do better. Yeah. So let me, let me go into the defense of maybe the graphic artist. So, a lot of times we start businesses um, and we might not necessarily understand structure. So mm -hmm. he may not have a structure to where, you know, onboarding structure um, and how does he do his orders and how does he do his revisions and it'd be based on the structure. Because many times we will start a business because we have the talent or we have the right. technical ability, but we don't really know how to operate the business based off of the structure. Right. And I've dealt with business. I used to do a lead generation for small businesses and I would find is that I could generate the lead, but they didn't have a follow-up process. So the right. lead would sit there and they would never follow up. And then the lead goes cold. And then the problem is by the time you call them back, they don't even understand what they're responding to because it's been such a long time. So I would have to find out before we generate the lead, what's your lead follow-up process. And for many independent businesses, there was no process. 
because it was just a one person business, but it was like, I need leads. Well, if you don't have a follow up process, the leads not going to do you any good. They're just going to sit there and they're going to go cold. Right. So I think that's one of the issues is that we start a business, but don't necessarily have processes in place and systems mm -hmm. that allow us to execute because there's software that he could get to where he could put the order in the software, send it to you. You fill out the software and it comes back to him based on what he needs to change it. And he just checks it off. And I did that initially. Okay. But then when it, you send me drafts, I'm like, okay, I don't like this. Take this out or let's try this. Let's try that. And it's supposed to be four different designs. And then it's like, okay. And then you, and then you redo it, send it back. And it's like, okay, I like this. Just take this out mm -hmm. and leave everything else the same. You do the one thing, but then you kind of mess around and tweak something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, and I gotta. I'm, I feel like if I'm, if I tell you twice, and you don't get it right to two times, something is wrong with you. You're not yeah, yeah, paying yeah. attention. So yeah. it is your structure. You know, it's a structure. What is your your lead follow up? And I didn't even think of that, but that is a thing that a lot of businesses are lacking. Elite follow up. Follow up is very important. Yeah, but it's, it's because they start the business and they are one man show and I've been there. Okay. And then you don't have the money to hire other people because he may you need a project need manager. You need to have an outline. You need to have yeah. an outline of yeah. follow up structure. Exactly. You know? so, but he may need a project manager and then have you just talk to the project manager and then have the project manager communicate to him what needs to be done. And then the project manager makes sure that when he returns it back to the project manager that everything is done like you asked before right. they give it back to you. But to see if he don't have that in between because he don't have the, the ability to hire that person, then he's not only doing the designs, he's trying to do all this customer service. And he maybe he just needs to focus on designs. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. One last thing on this. Okay. Just for fun, who has the worst customer service? Uh, the number one retailer in the, in the, in the country. Who? Uh, you want me to say the name on your show? Yes. Uh, Walmart. Oh, okay. They ain't got worst customer yeah. service in the world. You can't even get it. Like, if you have an issue in there and you need to teach, talk to a manager, they just won't, they won't show up. Right. And it's like... Yeah, they won't show up. So that's why I say is that we deal with people with bad customer service all the time and we just got used to it. Right. So what, you know what I'm saying? So it's not as if everybody has good customer service because you can't even find... Uh, if you're in a department and you need help in Walmart, you can't find anybody. Right. I've noticed that. That's yeah. I don't even go. I probably went to Walmart probably three times since it's been in existence. Okay. I don't do Walmart. I do Target and okay. everything else, but not I would never no. No. Yeah, see, Walmart's real big and real big in the South. They're like everywhere. But and so that's one of the issues. Right. But and then I'm going to leave that to um Mr. Walton's children who took over that empire. Yeah. They allow for them to have poor customer service because it's not even about customer service. There's they're they, they're just embedded in the American society that people are still going to shop there yeah. because the prices are cheaper. Exactly. Right. So it's like we don't care if you get good or bad customer service, you're still gonna come because our prices are cheaper. So we and then we could pay these people, you know, keep them part-time, pay them minimum wage and and we take food stamps and our employees on food stamps. So exactly. we're double dipping exactly. all types of stuff. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they got it. They got it great. So they they have the, they have the worst system. customer. They have they a follow-up lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. They they had the worst customer service outside of like an independent business. I've been to some independent businesses, especially ones that have receptionists, mm -hmm. and their customer service is so bad. I say I'll never come back here again. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Don and Dave. Appreciate you having me. Y'all be easy out there. Make sure y'all stay safe. Yes, and go to his YouTube channel, Diamond Dave, at Diamond Dave on YouTube. Yes, ma'am. All right. They know what you got them. They know what you got them.